everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint step by step in acrylic on canvas this really gorgeous scene. It's like a cute kind of sunset scene with a little boy fishing in palm trees. There's more information about this painting and in, uh, materials and everything down below, but most importantly, there's a link. Let me turn off the, the, the little blizzard of Texas snowflakes here. <laughs> Just wanted, I wanted to start with bubbles today, so we're starting with the bubbles. So if you check that down below, there's a link to our website. And on the website is both a grid on this one and the traceable. Those are free. Just grab those. I'm going to be doing this step-by-step -step as we paint today. So that'll come up a little bit after. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He helps me with all this fun teaching art mayhem by uh, making the whole system go live. Ooh. What was that? That was a computer that, that was a computer <laughs> rebooting computers, as you may or may not have heard. Uh, he tracks me with robotic cameras. He zooms in. He watches the chat for questions. He's like got a bazillion D jobs. But as co-host, really, this show wouldn't happen without him. So today I wanted to give him like an extra little thank you and an extra hand because we could not do it without him. Can you imagine if I was sitting here trying to teach and like, I don't know, pushing buttons, trying to switch cameras? It would just be useless art instruction i feel all right let's hop on in to this gorgeous painting you know where the deets are open up that description guys sometimes there's just three lines above the fold open it all the way up learn more about the painting learn the colors see all the stuff and go to the website to get that extra free information all right so here i have my reference image which i'm going to move up top you guys have picture in picture i have this all right and here I have an 11 by 14 artboard. I grabbed these at Michael's for the reason that it's very close <laughs> and they store well. And they're perfectly fine to paint on and they're very economical. Um, we have wishes from our community. We like to put wishes, intentions, ideas, things out into the universe, get that positivity going. So we have this wish, a new home for Mary Elizabeth, and this is a forever home. And I'm gonna add, add a great surprising deal that, she's, that she'll find very unexpected. Um, then we have relief from vertigo and finding firm ground and good health for Deborah. Leslie is wishing for safety for everyone in Australia, all the animals and all the people, and just general health for all, which I think is very sweet of Leslie. Strength and healing for Angela. And then we all, there's been a bunch of wishes for an end to all cancer. And as you guys know, I think cancer is dumb and should go away. It's just gone. So I'd love to see a cure for that in my lifetime. And then uh, this one kind of came in last, which is a really fantastic eye surgery for Anne. Now, when I do these, I'm going to use water, kind of blend them into the surface before I start to paint. That way the words don't bleed up into my uh, painting. I want to talk real quick about the acrylic colors. So I have cadmium red, quinacridone magenta, doxazine purple, phthalo blue, phthalo green, cadmium yellow. This is carbon black, use Mars black, either black. I have a whole video about all the blacks. Um, it's definitely inspired a lot of videos about all the blacks, but what I'll say is we cover all the stuff, chromatic blacks, everything you need to know about black and all the black paints. If you need to know more about black for this video, carbon black or Mars black is fine. Lamp black would also be okay. Home black now. Okay. Titanium white we're going to be using. I might throw in a little bit of this zinc white. And here is the special color of the day. Woo! Special color of the day. All right. I'll stop giving y'all like a sick stomach mm. so this is luminous opera by holbein acrylic and then i have here uh rose fluorescent by senlier uh abstract now you'll notice these are not far off in color are they mm -mm. they're really fantastic this is just a few dollars this is a good bit more and i'll tell you why you would use uh this one or any of these wonderful colors that they do. They have a much more complete color list in their fluorescent. In fact, the only one they're missing is blue. And you can grab that from Senlayer or Golden. But their particular luminous colors are the most light fast. So I hear myself sometimes. Well, I, I'm hearing a voice in my head. Oh, I you can't know what be. it was? It what was, was it? It was the chat interrupting us, saying how awesome you are, because Amber oh, just put in this really cool one-up sticker. And I'm just going to say, it's awesome, Amber. Thanks. Is it awesome? Yeah. She's Does she put up a sticker? She Does she need some sticker. Texas snowflakes? Always. I face forward because now the Texas snowflakes come at me. 
Come, come at, at me, bubbles. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Come uh, you at know me. what, man? Acrylic April. I'll show y'all how to go. paint some bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Boom. Boom. Thank you, you for the it. sticker and right. my very big hair. Okay. So this is what we have here. I'm going to be using Luminous Opera. If you don't have a Luminous Opera, just use any really, really bright pink. Um, fluorescent colors come from a cost of like, oh gosh, I've seen them as little as like a buck. Mm. In the in the bottles, all the way up to very pricey. So what I would say is, figure out your budget, buy whatever's fun in your budget, and just stick with that. But don't feel pressure to have anything to complete the painting. Mm. I'm gonna start putting up my colors, John. Are you? Mm -hmm. I you am. Think those colors I am are to do needed? the background to get the background in. So I'm gonna start out with my quinacridone magenta, fun color. Like it very much. I'm definitely going to add uh, a little bit of my, look at that color. Is that Ooh, not just crazy? Yeah. <laughs> it's just beautiful, beautiful color. I'm going to put a little of my had yellow out there on this side. Then let's get some of our, okay, good, thalo blue. Sometimes I got to check that because I also have a bunch of ultramarine and I have, I use professional paints and when you use professional paints, it'll tell you green shade or red shade. Doesn't do that in the student paints. Definitely does it in the pro paints. And I have all the shades of thalo blue. So it gets in ultramarine. I actually have to read that. You just go thalo blue and I'm good. You do that. All right. But sometimes I'll tell you that. This is also blue shade. This is really funny. Thalo green, blue shade. Sometimes thalo green comes in yellow shade. Because art companies like to mess with us. <laughs> and just make buying paint somehow harder no they don't they're just making products that artists are like please would you pretty please make this because it would help us so much and then the paint companies go well if you're really really nice and say thank you and please we might make that color for you and so then they make a bunch of colors right which is good because which need is lots good of colors we need all the colors dur, 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 dur. oh my gosh how is it I, there it is okay i knew i had artist knives over here at least one or two i was like boo i have no artist knives None of the knives. I'm going to make a couple colors to get into the background. One of the colors I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a little bit of my Quinn in a smidge of my yellow. And I'm going to mix these together a bit. And this is going to warm the Quinn. Let's warm the Quinn. You know, Daria never warmed Quinn. Quinn that... never warmed to anyone. <laughs> Quinn was very popular. <laughs> Are we talking about the same Quinn? All right. Harley so, Quinn? No, I'm talking about Quinn from Daria. I know who you're talking okay. about. Okay, sad, sick world. All right, sick, sad world. So I'm going to come here, and I have phthalo blue and phthalo green. I'm going to take one part phthalo blue, and I'm going to take one part phthalo green. We're going to mix these together. This is fantastic. This is fun. Are we loving this? I hope so. Mm. I hope so. And that's going to make our phthalo turquoise. This particular artist knife is a Scotty knife. Normally I would use a diamond headed knife, but apparently I was washing all of those. So it's not here right now. That's what's happened. You're like, why are you using that knife? No good reason, guys. None at all. But I am going to use a good reason to get a big brush and brush in my words. Now you'll notice that I kind of thought about the colors that would be <laughs> on my background and I made sure that the words were in those colors. And the reason for that is, is that um, the watercolor pencils I use are Cron d'Ache and they're actually really spectacular. So uh, what that means is, as you can see, a lot of pigment. Mm. It can actually get into my paint and stain the color. So I have to be a little thoughtful about what I'm using here, even though I'm adding all this water. Look at that. Now the words won't bleed in, they've gone to the universe. <sighs> breathe in the good, <sighs> breathe out the bad. Okay, so we have a bunch of interesting stuff going on here. And what we basically got to do is create a little keyhole of light here with our pink and these ranges. And then there's sort of a nice little surrounding of blue and purple. Let me put out some purple. Now, this is definitely going to be some interesting blending. If you need more information on blending, I did make a whole video about it. Um, all the different ways that you can blend. It's doing quite well. People have enjoyed it. But what I will say is really important is it gives you lots of options because as a new artist, you might not have the tool I'm using today, but you still want to do the painting, right? 
So having options is really important for you. Actually, it's important for every artist. And then I had to tell you, every time I come to a canvas, there's a different way that I might get something done. And it's just good to know that there isn't just one way to accomplish a technique or a goal. There's like a bunch of ways and you learn them all and then you get very relaxed and like, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to paint this painting. Well, that's how I get anyways. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm going to take a little bit of this Quinn Magenta with the mix that I had here. You can see I'm mixing in the center. And oh, it looks like it needs maybe a little more of our yellow to get that good color that we're looking for. There we go. And right here in the center, I'm going to go like this back and forth, mixing that color right there. That's my lightest color. I can even come and add a little more. This is a number 30 bright. What's the purpose of it? It big. That's its whole claim to fame. Large brush. Lots of brushes are 30s. You're just looking for a big bright that lets you push the paint around in a bossy, bossy manner like I am right now. I'm going to come down here. And as I come down, I'm going to get more and more of that magenta going. Now, the magenta tends to be a bit transparent. Look how fast I'm moving. Oh. Yeah, I'm going, right? This isn't sped up. This is real time. These are live videos. The reason I'm moving this quickly is that acrylic oh. paint blends when it's like, wet and not so much when it's dry. I have a little camera malfunction happening. What do you have here. going on? It just started to look around for a minute. <laughs> I leaned forward and the camera just went, whoa. We're a professional, up. sweetheart. Some days. Some days. Some days we are. Some days. Gonna keep adding a little white, make sure this little keyhole looks real nice and and wonderfully light, right? Let's bring that in the center. Let's really work that in. There we go. Inseat start to keyhole in. I'm gonna get a little more white, and it's just really a lot of white right here. Come along the top. Blend that there. And as you see, the blending happens because the paint is still wet. When the paint is dry, it will stop blending. And then we can just do another layer. It's not really a stopping point or too much of an actual obstacle. Now, if I don't want to see any brush strokes and I want all of this to be perfectly smooth, I'm going to take a soft, dry brush and very carefully dust all of this in. Now, this particular brush I'm using is the Ultimate Varnish Brush. Um, I have them for varnish, but I really like them as a blender. I'm not as fond of goat as a blender because it tends to shed. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it at all. That's just why I use that one instead of goat. I'm going to get my turquoise. Now let's come here and start to put that wonderful first blush of turquoise on the surface. Who doesn't love that? Now, all Ma messy though. Masa sunshine. Hi, Masa. Ma sunshine. Ma sunshine, not Masa. <laughs> <laughs> Ma sunshine, totally different. Says, uh, for beginners, can you use glazing liquid? Definitely, definitely. I'm currently out of glazing liquid today. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be seeing it. I don't even know how I ran out, but I did. I guess I use a lot of it. You can use products like glazing li liquid by Golden. Not all glazing liquid is a blender. Golden's glazing liquid is a blender. You may want to avoid a product called retarders. And the reason for that is, is that if you get the mixes wrong, it can keep your paint from drying. So I recommend Golden's product. Um, it's in the description as one of the recommended products. It is fantastic. I love it very much. I'm going to grab some white here. Just gonna work these two here. Fun to do. Now, we can get quite, kind of an interesting little uh, purple going between the turquoise and the magenta. As you can see, I'm getting one here. And come through and start to blend those two spots through using that purple. Going to be real fun for the finished painting. 
just the turquoise and the magenta using this one inch I'm just keeping those blends very soft and atmospheric this original piece is a digital work and digital art super awesome super good art right does have some different truths for it and so to get that I have to kind of work my acrylic I have to romance my acrylic into behaving so I've got this line here I don't want the line this paint luckily is still wet enough and that top paint is still wet enough I pulled all the moisture out of my brush so it's still be soft and I'm going to come here and just kind of create a very soft transitional line so not too dissimilar from those weird moments when we do makeup right if you do makeup or any blending activity that you might have in your life I don't know I'm not in your house you might have a wholly different blending activity hmm. that's my blending activity <laughs> but you can see it's creating some very nice little transitional space isn't it it, it is super fun stuff and I rinse out and then I'm gonna get this wet again let's get a little bit of our magenta loaded onto here and I'm gonna take some of my purple into it I like that very much and I'm gonna go ahead and to work that color I'll take that through right here a bit just trying to create the distant foggy feeling of it I can wiggle the brush across rinse get the extra moisture out extra moisture coming out is why I really really like the synthetic over the goat is because the goat just holds a lot more water in it that's all it is preferences preferences are important but it's also good to know as artists when it's just a preference that we have versus you know something that's very important art information that would be true all the time like I was just answering a question today about not being able to paint acrylic over oil paint but you could paint oil paint over acrylic that's not a preference that's just how paint works you might prefer to use phthalo blue instead of diag uh prussian there we go. right there's two blues see i got two blues in my Wheelhouse. And actually, those were the correct two blues to compare to each other. So, go, John. They're like even different color blues. Oh, look at these. Like, isn't that just getting moody? It, it, it is. It gets moody, and I like it when it gets moody. I'm going to add a little white to my turquoise. Helps that color really pop out. Come here and. You moody painting. Go to your room and think about it. <laughs> I'm going to right after the show. <laughs> what a nice evening to paint. Breathing in. Yeah. <sighs> breathing out. Don't hold your breath when you're painting. It's really easy to do. Tension in your shoulders and hold your breath. That's a pretty good little smoky, moody beginning. Now, That's a pretty good sky. If you never painted before... This can be a bit of a trick. And with really, really new artists, I like to actually have them start to do these multicolor uh, blends with sponges. The sponges are so forgiving. Again, there's a blending video that demos that. And then there's a, maybe the moderators can find it for me. There is a lavender painting I did with butterflies and Q-tips and I blended the background in a sponge. That's a fantastic example of a blended background with sponges and I think the Groot background. Groot, I'm a Groot. So those are ones to like look at. If you've never ever blended a background before in acrylic and you're like, man, I, I really want to do this painting, but that's a lot. Go practice that technique and you'll be like, I got it. I got it. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I got it. Do mm. you know what I didn't get for myself? What didn't you get? Coffee. Oh, no. <laughs> Why would I get myself some coffee? That's... I don't know, but I'm going to now dry my canvas. All right. <sighs> so while she's drying her canvas surface, that's not really a canvas. That's a... Uh, artboard, uh, I think, canvas board, canvas board, that's the word for it, canvas board, artboard, 
I think is when it doesn't have any texture on. So all these surfaces have very specific names, and so it's it's you know it's important to know them when you're talking to other artists so that you're accurate when you're describing things. So you don't say uh, I painted on my canvas, and what you really meant was I painted on my prepared wood surface, and that would be confusing because they would say, oh painting on canvas you might need to make sure that the drum is tight or these other things and you weren't having any of those issues so as i go on and on and on what i'm trying to say is that words are important <laughs> so a lot of this uh a lot of the stuff that cinema is talking about she's she's trying to help you guys understand why and and so some of these words uh that's what they come from and don't use heat you may have heard me say that before in other videos if not this is your first time. Let me just warn you. Heat is one of those things you're going to hear about. What are we going to hear? Oh, gosh. Talk about that color shift. But we, we'll we just, we just barely got white. on color shift today. We were talking about vocabulary. Oh, were we? Just you before. changed the conversation from color shift? I didn't change it. I went back to it. I just, you know, <laughs> just got them a little bit up to date on vocabulary, too. How you guys doing? Good. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just I think I just gave him the eyebrows. Huh? Like, how you guys doing? I think I did a Joey. How you doing? All right. So going forward, I am now going to get into some of my more luminous colors because I want to create some effects here. And I want this to be fairly dry and cured. Is if it? I don't get this dry and cured enough, the next layer of paint, because it's got some moisture in it, will actually start to pull it up uh, from the surface because it'll start to do a thing called underbinding. Oh, we're a bunch of different ways we get to underbinding. Uh, usually it's just about not letting this layer dry enough. Another place you would see underbinding is if you were to say paint acrylics over a surface it couldn't stick to like oil. Or if you use too much water in the mix, it's a lot of water you have to use though. It's like you'd have to use like 50, 60% water on a, on a surface. Like these good paints can take up to 30% water. So they thin a lot before you ever see that problem. These are just different little things to think about. And then I like to make sure it feels cool. Is it cool? It's cool. It's cool. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my cad yellow into my opera pink. Not Oprah pink. I did call it like Oprah pink for the longest time. <laughs> and I'm gonna get some white into it. You can see it just makes the most shockingly amazing color. And I'm gonna start to brush this into here. And you can see, wow. Look at that. Who doesn't love that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Somebody. Somebody might be like, <gasps> down thumb. Luminous pain. Sir, the devil. We don't like pink paint. <laughs> My mom had an agent that used to say that. There won't be any pink in it. I can't sell pink. I remember. <laughs> you remember her? <laughs> she is unforgettable. <laughs> unforgettable. That's what she was. She was crazy. <laughs> But in the best possible way. Best possible way. So as I come down here, you can see it really just creates this saturation, this brightness, this just bomb. And who doesn't who doesn't want bomb? I know you do. Go a little yellow into that. I know you do. And this gets kind of helps it be a little bit, perhaps a. Uh, mood tacular and it's very transparent all the neon colors are super transparent so what you're going to get when you work with them whether you work with a uh, sun layer abstract for a couple bucks or the whole bind is you're going to see that they're definitely more of a glaze than an opaque they're not opaque but if i want to do like half tones i can actually take my quin into it my quin magenta and you can see it's still in that range but Look, it just brightens the quin a bit. You know you wanted it to be brighter. I'm gonna just brush back and forth. And you can kind of see that the brush is just sweeping back and forth, isn't it? Mm. Like this, like this, like this. This is what the brush is if you're just like, I'm in love with that brush. It's a number one silver ultimate varnish. But what you're really looking at is a one-inch synthetic mop. 
And there are good ones, lots of places. I really like this one. I can recommend this one uh, really unreservedly. But, you know, wherever you live, whatever you've got going on, what you're looking for in the little art store when you go into it is a one-inch synthetic mop, which, by the way, they have. So you'll find one. I'm not sending you on a fool's errand where there will be no mop. Thinking to myself, ha, ha, I've sent them looking for a mop, but there will be no mop. There are mops for everyone. And you can kind of see that as it goes over the other color, even though everything is dry because it's so transparent, you get a nice transitional kind of effect right there as well. Is it glowing enough for you yet? I don't know if it's glowing enough for you yet. I think it's pretty awesome. I don't know. Fun stuff. Rinsing it out. Rinsing it out. Rinsing out is quite good, quite important. Now, I think I'm going to, this has a lot of yellow in it. So if I get it with the purple, and I'm going to, it's definitely going to get a little bit knocked back with the purple, but because it's a neon color, look, it barely grayed. So you can start to work a purple cast right there into it. Look at that when you add a little white to it. Gorgeous color to work with. Opera. Opera pink in luminous and regular opera pink are wonderful colors. Uh, watercolors usually um, are more aware of this as a color in oil artists. Um, just because a lot of acrylic companies don't necessarily have it. As you can see, I'm bent on making these cool color transitionals. I feel like I've got one more radial here. I'll take my turquoise and maybe add a little blue to it. Blue it up a bit. And then come here and just press this outer corner. I know I'll be up here in a second with... Um, trees and things but it's just nice to especially with the turquoises which are a little bit transparent to get those going how are you feeling do you have do you feel you've got some yeah. stuff going on now see what's cool about this if you look at the reference which is digital in other words that's just painted with light right in pixels which is does not make it less art really let me definitively say and if you if you're not sure, go join the uh, Facebook group Spit Paint, and you'll see some art being thrown down. The medium you use isn't what makes it art or not. That's just how you express yourself visually. And you're using acrylic, right? I'm using acrylic, and I think it's really good to see how you take a photograph and you turn it into a painting, how you might take a different medium and turn it into a painting, These how these skills go across. If you see an effect in one medium, how you might get it into a different space. So I think that's just an important thing to be aware of is that how do I make this transition? I, I see this really cool effect. It maybe it's like a mistake. I remember the first time I saw a lens flare and I really wanted to paint that in a painting. That wasn't like something I had wanted. Actually, my camera case was cracked. Yeah. But I love the effect and it was interesting to figure out how I could paint that in watercolor and do it in acrylic and also get it done in pastels. So, you know, it's cool to know these things, I think. I think. Yeah. I think now, it's good. now, 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 now I'm going to put in some distant and mistily faded trunks. And I guess I'll just take a number four round to do that. This is an art Sherpa. Yup, it's got my name on it. Number four round. Um, I actually designed this brush uh, in partnership with Silver Brush. These are the art Sherpa white filaments. Um, these are amazing brushes. But what you really need here is just a number four round. So if you don't have this brush, don't not do this painting today. Just grab whatever round brush you have that gives you control. I say that a lot because I actually hear from people all the time who will want to hold off on doing a painting. I'm going to grab a little of my zinc white because they might not have a particular brush or something in that moment. So we've got this little space of light that's going to come down here and here, and we've got to put some little trunks into the distance. These are coming up, and we're going to use the magenta because that is gonna help them feel like they're in the mist. Might even grab a little of that wonderful neon. 
You want it to be close in color and a shade or two darker than the background if you want that misty effect. And you do want the misty effect. It's so much fun. Let's give you a little friend here, friend. These little lines are distant, far away trunks. You can see me adding water to improve the flow off my brush. Now, as I come up, the trunks will start to take on that turquoise effect. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You know, play with that. Let that be a thing that's happening. And they're, they're so far in the distance, like we don't even see necessarily, you know, what they've got going on. I'm going to take some of my purple and my luminous opera. You could do your purple and magenta if you don't have this color. That's what you would do. You would still paint it just with just the magenta. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to add a little distant trunk. Now, one of the advantages that digital painters have over us poor canvas painters is they store their art projects in what's called layers. That means each art element is stored in its own separate zone. So you can literally work on things in the back and move them around and shift them and have control in a way that we don't really have as traditional painters. Do you let that stop us? No, we don't. We persevere. That's what we do. Soldier on is another good way of saying it. But we do. What we're doing is just blending these in. And I'm taking the turquoise at the top. Whenever you're doing this effect and you've got these multicolored effects, you're going to want to reflect those colors into the trunks. Some zinc here. Zinc is nice because it lets me tint the color without uh, really changing the hue. And right here. And then I might get into some of this purple. The pink, and you can see I'm just changing it so that it reflects what's going on in the background. And we don't really see these distant palms, do we? They're little fronds. We don't really see them. I'm just smoothing out these rough edges with a damp brush. So that's something that we've got to think about is what's happening there. I've got another one right here I'm going to put in. It's also a bit purple. And I may be putting the pink right into it, which just purples that up a bit. And you can see also pulls it into that warmer range of the center. Where this center light is, objects around it will be warmed by the light. And so they will more reflect these brighter, lighter colors that you have in this piece. Now, the next cool thing I'm going to do is I've got kind of a palm here. It comes up and he's really purple, isn't he? I'm going to put some like a, the, the opera into him. Got my number four. Just getting that and I'm going to come right here and let's give a very strong. That's palm pretty. tree form. Yeah. Right here. Strong palm tree form. How strong was that? You see that strong downward brush stroke? I'm going to come back with a little bit of my pink. And I'm going to make sure that there's a diffusing, even though I know I've got bushes and stuff here, I just want to make sure that that's a little bit pinker. 
And I'm gonna real quick take a picture for the step-by-step. -step. You guys take this in where we're at here. I'll have to catch the first two steps from earlier. Oh. <sighs> Screen cap, but this one I can catch here. These are just helpful because sometimes in more complicated paintings like this, where there's a lot of really wonderful lighting effects, being able to go back and see how it was constructed makes really all the difference in the world. Now, as I'm coming up with my palm tree up into here, I'm gonna darken the top of the trunk. See how I've darkened it using just the thalo blue? And I can make it even darker using thalo blue and doxazine. I'm going to draw the palm fronds coming off of it that I see. It's going to look like the crazy fingers of what? For a second. Edward Scissorhands. It's going to be a little Edward Scissorhands for a second. Look at that. Now, you can individually with your number four round come through here and talk about bronze in that kind of way. So I'm kind of individually speaking of them with my paintbrush. You're fronting them up. I'm fronting them up. The other thing I can do is I can use a fan to fast fraud. <laughs> if I don't want to spend a long time fronting, that's what I do is I use a fan to fan fron. But you can see that we're getting that little frowning effect. And, you know, it may be that right about now we do get some black into some of that. We want it to be darker, darker, darker. So if the purple isn't dark enough, you're going to want to take it into a dark range. Now I'm going to grab my number four fan brush, number four fan, blow that up and get some blue into it. I'm going to just make sure that these little fans are very frond. See, I'm doing a fan. Yeah. Fast fronds. <laughs> 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 you know, whatever you want to do. I got to come and be like, you are not fronding the way I told you to frond. Let's see how we're getting a nice effect there. Nice, dark. Spectacular effect. I like to bring some of those brush strokes up over and I pull it down. So I'm just loaded on my fan like this. And then I just pull it across and see that act of pulling it across just goes, whoa. And then if I go up, it just wants to make these shapes, man. All I can tell you is this is what my fan brush wants to do when it's allowed to do what it wants. And I can take this coming down, add a little texture, as you might, as you could. Bring that around. How are we doing? Mr. Cooney. Looking really good. We got some uh, palm trees happening here, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. You do have a palm tree. We got a little palm. And I've got some background palms that I could work on here. I'm going to get into my blue. Turquoise. And sort of coming here, kind of behind everything, is a bit of distant little bronze that are maybe hiding these little shapes and textures, right? Layer them out playfully. In the corner, it's quite dark. I'm going to go ahead and just get really into a dark purple up here. That looks really nice. 
And just being playful, grab a little blue. It does? That's so good. I love to hear that. Just a little bit of a little bit of something. As we build it up, as we think about what could be going on in the background. Now coming down, I'm gonna get a little of my neon here. I may need John to get me a little bit of uh fresh water. I think I've got one jar though for the minute, so it should be okay. We'll work that out. Will we work it out? I'll get some. You're amazing. All right, so sort of back here, before we get, see what I'm looking at is like, I'm looking at the layers, what's furthest back, what do I have to paint? Because my painting has to be visually stored in layers inside my mind. I can't just click through them in Photoshop. I've got to hold them there. And in a sense, whether you know it or not, that's what you're doing. You're saying to yourself, the background's back here, then the trees, then this. And you kind of think about the order of operations of when, and how you might be painting something to get that effect. When and how. When and how. Oh, you're amazing. I will trade you. Trade you dirty water. I will trade you happily dirty water for clean water. The only thing with like paint is like sometimes you got to change out your water a lot. And so John was just handing me some clean water. And so and I'm clearly getting way overexcited with my little palm frond right here. But they're fun. Right? They're fun. You can come and sort of define that and maybe pull some of this more light value out as you go. Three waters, I feel blessed. All right. So, see how everybody's doing. Are you guys liking that? That looks good, doesn't it? You look good. Yeah, it's really coming in. You know, um, and the thing to remember is that you can practice a brush stroke, right? Watch how I'm doing it. John zooms in so you can really see it. Watch how I'm doing it. Take the tool that you've got and practice it. Brushes are not equal. They're all made a little bit differently. Um, and so if you don't have my exact brush, it doesn't mean you can't get the palm fried, but you might need a minute with your brush to go, how am I going to get this effect with the tool I have? By the way, if you really, really don't have one, show you a little trick. If you have a round, you can splay them out like this. It's a little awkward, but it will work. See how I'm doing? I can pinch my brush while painting. So don't feel like you can't do it. Yes, you can. I'm going to take a picture. If there's any questions, John, because yes. we're up late, we probably have people who never make the lives with us today. Is it safe to use gold leaf paint with your brushes you, that you use for acrylic paint? Not the glue part, but the leaf part. Gotcha. The Mona Lisa adhesive or any of the gold leaf adhesives will just, uh, your brushes. Mm. That said... There's this weird stage with acrylic where all gold leaf wants to stick to it. So you almost don't even need the sizing to get it to stick. And then you can varnish over the top and it will totally hold it. Um, but yeah, for the leafing, it's the same with frisket. Liquid misket, liquid sizing huh. for watercolor. Those brushes should only ever be in that. And remember to add a little bit of like a hot soapy water to it, you know, whether you're rinsing out to keep those brushes longer. Right. Same with the gold foil. Hot soapy water is your friend. You guys ready to see me make a really easy bush? Yes. Yeah? All right. I will. I'll do that for you. Just because I'm generous in my heart. All right. Let's see it. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to grab a little bit of my wonderful, wonderful zinc. And I'm going to pull some of that blue right here just a bit. Just a bit as one might want. And then I'm going to get into my purple, still pulling but a little bit of that zinc because it helps lift that as bright as it can be. I'm going to break this up. And I'm going to just tap this tool down and I'm going to get this random texture that feels very much like a leaf, yo. And I'll pull this right even over that blue. I just wanted that contrast of that blue. Your best shrubbery texture. 
my best shrubbery texture and like I'm just tapping up and down I'm letting it happen man I'm I'm channeling my inner Bob mm. channeling my inner Bob let the trees be cheerful <laughs> chipper of great mirth <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just pulling this here and you can see that the little randomizing of these bristles it's not very different from that effect you get out of a digital tool. And you can see as I move forward, I'm adding the pink to my effect. You can see how the brush is. It's just clumpy. I just, sometimes when you're working with your tools, you look to yourself and you say, oh, that's a very clumpy, odd little shape it's made there. Ha ha! <laughs> you're exactly what I've been looking for, a clumpy little shape. I'm going to brush back and forth, and that kind of smooths this down. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out and under my bush a bit. I'm going to come here with slightly damp brush. A little water. And I'm going to create a mist effect. See our mist effect? Using all that up to get a little misty effect. That's about taking those hard edges and softening them. That makes a nice little bush there too. Can't help myself. I'm gonna stand back and look at that for a second. That's terrific. Turned out really nice. It's looking good. How's your guys' is looking? We're just, you know, we're having yeah. a good time, guys. It's just coming right along. Making a very cheerful painting. Cheerful. Cheerful. I need a cheerful painting in my life right now. I don't know about you guys, but I could use some some mirth. You guys like a little mirth? I, I think so. Mirth is always nice. Even darker. Like to layer that depth. See, when I layer, it does. It creates that feeling of things not being just one space, one kind of a way. A little bit touch of dark value there. Get out of John's way. Having fun. Are you having fun? I hope so. Now, I'm going to definitely make a little more phthalo turquoise because I've got to pull it down into my water reflection. <coughs> and also because it makes me genuinely happy. Anybody have any questions while I'm mixing phthalo turquoise? Let's see here. Oh, she's using gold leaf paint. Oh, gold leaf paint. Do you mean gold paint? Because gold leaf is generally pounded out metal. Gold paint, maybe. Yeah, gold paint. Um, gold paint is fine. If it's acrylic. If it's acrylic, it's fine. An oil-based one would not be fine, but an acrylic one would be fine. And I have to tell you, Holbein also makes the most amazing metallic. Mm. Not just uh, um, neons. They make a gold gesso that's, like, better than most gold paints. And then after that, I really like Golden's uh, fine gold. Mm. Just if anybody wants to know what I like, you may not want to know. But if you did, now I told you. That's what you get for showing up on her channel. On a Friday <laughs> in the evening when I never lie. You're going to get some opinions. <laughs> get some opinions. Did you want some? Good, because you got some. I'm going to add a little white <laughs> to the purple. With doxazine purple, you've really got to add a little bit of color to it to even see it. And come across. Kind of like implying maybe a little bit of a, a land bit here. And then I'm going to turn this to the side. Dip in water, turn that to the side. Drag that down. 
That's real nice. We've got a little bit of color there. Got a little bit of a the thought of a reflection is starting to happen. I'm going to take some of my, that's again the zinc. You could use titanium white. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I want some interesting stuff to happen. A little more zinc. A little more turquoise. The trick here is just trying to get these reflections to uh, kind of come forward as if in a mirror. I have flattened the brush with my fingers and now I'm going to come here and smooth these as much as I can. I'm going to get some purple. Go along the edge of the bank and pull some dark purple into it as well. Dark purple. It's looking a little watery, right? Come along tapping this up and down. I realize I haven't changed brushes. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> it just happens sometimes. You get in a groove and you're like, I'm going to smush you like this. And then if you could make a bank for me, that would be really cool. My brushes are alive, so I talk back. If they talk back, I'm running out of the studio. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Does that make sense? You you agree with this uh this uh, theory? I shall run out of the studio if they talk back. Seems good. What are you gonna do? Get back into your fan brush. That's what. Wherever it is. Fan brush number four fan. Now, there are fans out there. I really love my Archerpa fan for Heavy Body Paint because it's so stiff. And it doesn't stop being a fan brush the minute it gets wet. Some of them do. Some of them are super annoying that way. I'm going to make some sort of, before I get into my very dark and defined little fronds, I want to create some almost hidden and pushed back uh, implied textures of palm trees, if you can see what I mean. Not being that specific about it, but I do want to have them there. It'll help uh, give the piece what it needs for cohesive feeling. Now I've got a little purple one right here. Putting on a little more of my luminous opera. Isn't this a pretty palette today? It's a really pretty painting. It's incredible. You have to be like, if you wandered in, you'd be like, there's so much color. And no fast forward. Which you may be lamenting right now. You might be like, I really wish there was fast forward. But you might be like, woohoo, there's no fast forward. So it's really up to you. Luckily, you have that control. You have all the control. You're in charge. So I'm taking my quinacridone magenta and my docks purple. And I'm going to start working... This palm, this low palm, put it right here. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Like, what was he going to do? Be like, no, that is not where that palm goes. Like, that would be a really strange, like, <laughs> co hosting yeah. thing to do. <laughs> Adding a little blue to it. I really it. think you should have used yellow and green in this painting. Blue and pink is all wrong. I'm going to add the thick little base. 
that the little palm trees have using the little brush. I'm just tapping that up and down, aren't I? Being like, whatever! It's true, I am kind of going whatever. I like to pre-do these lines because they sort of just make sure that I'm thinking about where I'm putting my fronds before I put my fronds there. Plan your fronds. You may not be able to plan the things that happen in your life, but you can plan the, plan the fronds. You have so much control over how many leaves this palm tree grows, that wherever else is going on in your life, this you have a lot of control over. And that's wonderful. I'm going to put a little more blue near my black. How's everybody doing? Doing really good. This is a really nice, everyone's saying how much they really love your awesome necklace. Oh, thank you. This was a gift from my wonderful mother-in-law. Mm. And I love they, it very much. They, it was identified as a Betsy Johnson. Yes, it is. She had one and I uh, was eyeing it. And I think she did this to distract me because if she had turned her attention away from hers, it would have been gone. <laughs> no, we both just really love that designer. And I'm, I'm very grateful that she thought of me when she found it. So again, using the, the brush for fast fronds. Who's painting fast fronds today? Say me. You could paint slow fronds. I'm not here to say that there's a speed. Uh, that you're required to attain from your frond painting. I hear John typing furiously away. Just catching up with the moderators here, making sure I get all the questions. Now, why are you not using your fan brush? No, you are now. Yes. But you weren't earlier. Well, because sometimes I, so here's what happens as a teacher. Like as a new student, um, painting seems kind of a little bit magical and mysterious, right? It's the whole reason you're taking classes. And if I only demo one technique, techniques that I maybe I'm comfortable with, but uh, you learn that technique from me. That's actually what happens in a lot of uh, class situ classroom situations is you end up painting just like the teacher. I feel like my goal is to teach you just how to paint in general and then you learn how to paint like you. That's like my whole goal for you. So I'll try to show you one way to do a palm front and then I'll show you another way of doing a palm front and another way of doing a palm front. I already paint like me, I'm good. And I wanna help you figure out how you would paint when you are painting and the best way I can do that as a teacher is show this technique and that technique and this technique and that technique and change it up all the time so that yeah you're kind of maybe between video scrambling but at the end of it all and I have to say for people who have we've just recently done badges in our group where people can say I'm 500 paintings we have people who are 500 paintings in 300 paintings and you can see that they they haven't turned into carbon copies of me they have become the artist that they were born to be and that makes me super proud so that is why Sometimes I don't always use the same thing every time. Does that make sense? I hope that does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I felt like I wanted to f fluff it, and hopefully I'm glad I fluffed it. I like that. It's a nice texture. Okay, good. I've got one big dark palm to do, uh, it looks like right here all the way to the top. So that's what's going on with me. What's going on with you guys? <laughs> My mic back on over here. Your mic back on. Yes, yeah. please do. No, this is great. I just ha I have it turned off here so that my little noises moving around back here don't... Uh... Don't disturb anybody? Yeah. You can see I'm just pulling down the brush stroke. You may find that you enjoy st stroking upward. Guess what? Both are fine. I, you just got to pick the one that gives you more muscle control. You'll have more muscle controls uh, one direction over another. 
Pay attention to that as you're painting. It just tells you a little bit about yourself. What you don't want to do is hold your neck or body or any part of you in a really uncomfortable position. Making that weird little kind of cool. This is where they cut the little fronds off and then they make this sort of like little blister. You don't have to paint that part, but we haven't done it before, so I thought, why not do it this time, right? I'm clearly having a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have done that front first, but I will just... I'll just piece it in right now. Slow frog. These are just some textures coming in from that opposite direction that I can talk about. It will help that background feel more jungly. Don't you want your background to feel more jungly? I do. That's your goal, right? Your whole goal in life, jungly background? It is. You will not be satisfied until your background is the most jungly. No. George, can, George can hang out in that mundane green thing. But me, I got to have some quinacridone. Look at this jungle as it comes in. <laughs> Are we living it? We're living it. We're living it, living it, living it, living it, living it. So did we have anyone manage to find us on a Friday night? Because it's oh such not a time we do normally. We got, a, we got a great crew of people here. And, you know, they, you guys, we have a lot of, of we have, we have a, lot of po a lot of posts, a lot of paintings up on our Facebook group chats and our channels. It's a great place to post up paintings. And we'll always try to get in there and take a look at them and post up. Uh, oh, I that. love to see everybody's artwork. Yeah, we love, love, love seeing them up there. We do. I wish, uh, you know, we've asked uh, YouTube whenever they give us a poll. Not like we've asked, we don't know the lady who runs YouTube. We're not, we haven't met the CEO. So I'm not implying some like insider thingy. I'm just saying when they give me a poll and they're like, what feature would you most like? For all of the good that it is, I say uh, photo sharing so you guys could even share images right here on YouTube. So far not, but you never know, right? And right now you can share them on our website. Underneath the lesson, you can share them Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So we have not silenced you at all. Hmm. You're not silenced. So I feel like we're getting into the jungle, jungle space, aren't we? Yeah. It's getting kind of like this is becoming that fishing hole. That you probably were like, I'd really like to paint that fishing hole. That would be really fun to paint. And you're like, I really hope that's what she's doing. And you're like, maybe she's not really doing it. But I am really doing it. So you're probably very happy. I'm going to grab a little bit of my white into my turquoise with my big one-inch brush here. And I want to just up front here add a bit of this. Maybe like one there. Just a couple places. It'll, it'll help when I put the other... Uh, Little logs in. I'm trying to exaggerate those mm. water effects. Exaggerate. You should always exaggerate your water effects. All Unless right. it's snow. Don't exaggerate the snow. Eight inches is plenty of snow. You don't need any more. We all oh. need more snow. We need more everything. I'm really happy with the colors of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie to you. If nobody tuned in, I'd be okay. The, for, Super for, happy with the painting. For all those who are experiencing snow, this is for you. I may have to break my work in progress on the Frida on Instagram to update you guys with this painting because it's so cool. It, you guys have to admit, it's super cool. You don't actually have to admit it. I'm oh, not yeah, going to come to your it. house and make you admit it. I'm not going to be like in your home going, admit it! Admit it! <laughs> I could. But it feels like bossy, so I won't. I'm going to grab a little bit of my purple and my... I'm going to kind of do this little atmosphere. Look at this little atmosphere. A misty, misty bit back here. 
So the other way I can help it feel misty, even though we're not blending wet into wet, is by using some of the background color. That will help it too. Feel misty. You can see I'm just trying to. What are you laughing at? I heard you laugh. Oh well, there was a one of our Colleen's from L.A. said, uh, "I'm in L.A. We need more snow," and I laughed. You know. I've seen the movie Escape from L.A., and if it snowed there... That will be the end of L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we joke, but a two-hour reference means that you get to go about 10 miles. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm going to pull some of this color down. I'm doing to kind of create that little... A uh, landscape effect. Like we did across the other way. We just want to make it very soft and diffused. Now I have a second little brush here that's dry. And if I really want to soften it, I can use this. Look. Where are you going? You keep moving your, your surface around there. All right. Okay. See, I just soften that so much. Very soft and watery. What we're going for soft and watery yeah it's the goal i don't know what the goal is that's my goal make this little bit of landscape here that he's standing in front of And it's just sort of lip like this. So I'm like, oh, bush, 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 bush. Look at how fun bush it does. Bush, 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 bush. It does help to sing bush, bush, bush uh, from your art studio. So your family comes in to see what the heck you're doing. And then I highly suggest turning around and looking at him like, ah, painting. That's all that's happening here. It's just art. A little bit of that. Go to that. Oops. I get, that got away from me. I, got, I started having fun with it. So sometimes it'll happen. I'll be like, this is really fun. And then I grab some paint because I can't help myself. It's just too much fun. It looks really good. I'm going to turn it to the side again and just make sure that I've got a little... trick here is just to make sure that it's straight when it comes down. Ah, oh, it's cool. I haven't even gotten to the fireflies, the cool weird little logs. This will be, I think, our first really kind of like tropical swamp look that we've done. Hmm. Sort of like Miami. Yes. Or like, this. If you so, were to like walk outside of the city streets out into the little bit of the back country, it'd be like, you found the swamps of Florida. Yeah, that's kind of what, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I am kind of going for that. If that's a thing I'm allowed to go for, I am kind of going for that. I'm going to put a little more purple. I'm not sure if the Floridians would be into those pink and garish colors. me guys you're from florida tell john you like these colors what what Come on. fine we're not having marital this is not an actual mar i have to like so sometimes i'll joke on the show with john and then people are like don't fight <laughs> I, <laughs> like, yeah, we're, for, we're, in, in all seriousness i was the one who put the flamingos in the front yard so yeah he was it is i did i did locate them and bring them home and put them out there and arrange them he did much to the chagrin of the neighbors. I don't really know how the neighbors feel about it. Well, some of them liked it. Some of them didn't. Did you get feedback? <laughs> I never talked to her neighbors, so I don't know if you got feedback. <laughs> you know, when they're like, so, you've got some flamingos. I talked to a couple of neighbors, and they're all part of the same family. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that family loves our flamingos. <laughs> I love them, too. They're awesome. 
I'm going to just take my brush here and wiggle this up so that it's sort of soft here at the trunk, implying a little bit of a maybe more structurally thought out weirdness. Yeah. Still purple in the turquoise. I might, uh. Mm. There's a good question. Oh, I love good questions. What's the difference between neon and fluorescent? Um, fluorescent reacts with UV light. Neon does not necessarily. It can, most of it does, uh, but like the, when it gets really inexpensive, sometimes it won't. It'll just be super bright and saturated to your eye. Yeah. Fluorescent paint responds to fluorescent light, which means that it just has an extra glowiness to it under, okay. as you said, UV. Yeah. But that, you know, the, sometimes paint is UV reactive and it is not listed as such. Correct. Just because it's uh, not listed being fluorescent doesn't mean it may not be. Like titanium white tends to fluoresce pretty well. No, no. Was, the titanium it, which, white paint does not fluoresce. Which one was it? Um, none of the regular pigments we had fluoresced. Uh, Something did. I was thinking of that was weird. Mm, I could go back and watch the video. Ah. It doesn't matter. There's some things fluorescent. I go back. We did a whole bunch of black light videos. What I will say is if you want a white fluorescent, you've got to get that from Lucas. If you yeah. Actually, if you have any fluorescent color questions, yeah. ask me because you know, I know the answers. We have an entire series purple. of videos on our website about this too. Yep. Black light painting and how to convert your studio and how to enjoy black light painting. Yep. Yep. If you type in neon or fluorescent or black light you'll get a bunch of videos on it i feel like i feel like yes you will and I, yes yeah. you will well oftentimes neon and fluorescent are used interchangeably technically speaking they're not right like i have no idea oh no this says fluorescent so this is uh um uv reactive if it says fluoro or fluorescent, uh, sometimes luminescent mm. will be words that let you know it's going to be UV reactive. But if it just says neon or bright, yeah. I did have some surprise lipsticks and makeups that were, uh, oh, my hair. That was a weird thing. Remember when my hair was UV reactive? I had I a hair do. color that was. That was unexpected. <laughs> what hair color was that? Something I was wearing was super UV reactive. We try not to think about it. We're like, I wonder how healthy that is. Um, oh, no. But just getting my palm frond on. Get a little black in there. Finish out some of that. I'm just creating some textures here that sort of feel like palm fronds as well. And as you can see, that sort of layers that. I'm really pleased with myself. I'm sorry. I'm going to own it. I'm really like pleased it. with myself. It turned out really nice here. I'm super into it. I'm going to take a picture. You should definitely take a picture of that. I'll take a look around. I'm going to get this up on the edge. It's so gorgeous and it glows. Now, this, again, this will hold the vibrancy for a very long time if it's Holbein. If it's not Holbein, it can lose a little bit of its color. And it, and all, like and, uh, when it comes to UV reactive, it can use all, lose all of its UV reactive. But this one will last a very long time. It's UV reactive state, like 10 years, 15 years. That's a lot. Yeah. For this type of paint, yeah. Mm, gonna, oh, I don't have anything to sip. So I'm gathering my thoughts before I put in my logs, my boy, and my glow flies. Do we have any questions? Let's see here. Besides was... the fact that my hair chalk matches the... Sorry, I'm okay. I'm going to blow some bubbles. It's Texas yeah, snowflake time. You going to do some little snowflakes? I do. I think I, I feel like I need some snowflakes. Don't you feel like you need some snowflakes? I, I, I saw. Oh, my gosh. Let's see here. It was like, put it. Come here, bubble. 
Here they are! Here they come! Yay! Some bubbles. Come here. Come here. There we go. I have to reload that thing. Yes, we do need to reload it. So they they do love the uh the uh way that this has kind of got that wonderful Floridian kind of um it's cool. It's very it, it does. It gives that that really neat um glow glowy vibe. Glow glow that neon vibe. Neon. The neon. Okay, so we're almost done. Yep. About two thirds of the way. Let's take a deep breath in. <sighs> Remember, it's when you're doing new techniques, when you're mi trying to mix colors, it's very easy to get in the habit of holding your breath. So that's just something to avoid as you're going. Mm. Right? Luminous Opera. Really cool color. That's amazing. Just such a good color. That's a really fantastic color. But now I have to, I have to think about some weird word uh little logs and some word uh little planty things and then i'm gonna put my little young fisherman in nice will that be good yeah i feel so so i'm gonna start with a bit of my magenta and luminous opera and a small amount of purple i'm just trying to create a bit of a dark color, improving the flow of my paint. It's gonna come over here. And you know, I wanna see it, but I want it to not be like black. It'll get darker as it moves back. Making a little under. And then as I come backwards, I can darken it. But what you're seeing I'm doing is again, trying to keep that center area lit a little brighter than the rest, right? And then I'll just keep working darker and darker colors into this space. See how we're doing? We'll hit it with some highlights and that will help it pop from what we've got but that's how we're going to get there you can even come after under some of these little log bits and shade them you just want to make sure that they're a bit interesting and worked out and all the things that we're trying to get it to be come along this little bank edge and make sure that we've got some somewhat defined bank edge now. The bank edge. The night show. Haven't done a night show in a while. Now, you can get into your black on some of these. So like, this little one's gonna go high and come down. Big roots. These are some kind of crazy roots. They're Groot roots. Hmm. Groot. I am Groot. Try to wiggle your brush so the, they look really kind of rough and hewn and unexpected. Yeah. Little vines. And then we'll bring one that comes forward, maybe. And touch down here in the water. Now, here's an interesting thing. It's going to touch down in the water right here, right? But if you touch down in the water there, 
you're going to want to bring a reflection back. Into the water. See how I'm doing? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get into my pink. To help that feel a little bit more like a reflection. You're like, oh, that, that got in the water there. That's kind of awesome. Kind of fantastic. Kind of terrific. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go. I'm going to do AJ and the Queen here. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make this quite thick and, and ruggedy and not messy. Not messy indeed. And then maybe a little branch and value comes out there and then you could have a little side fellow it's got a little side gig there i have no side gig this is what i do all the time yeah so hopefully i do it kind of well oh you <laughs> one do. hopes you do great because what my husband is going to say in the middle of a live show well dear i know your heart's in it but... i've got some pointers for you you really could improve your painting. Oh my gosh. Have you tried using some better colors? End of a marriage. <laughs> Not like death of a salesman, death of a YouTube husband. <laughs> Even Willie no Loman just like cringed right there. I mean, I guess that design's okay. So I'm just making sure that where our dark roots are going in, I've got kind of a little reflection that speaks about that value, right? Now over here, I'm going to take a little bit of my luminous pink and a lot of my white, and you can even grab some yellow into that. It's going to make quite a bright color. Now I'm going to come on the top of these and add a highlight. little barky highlight. Now you can kind of see it better, can't you? Oh, yeah. Back from that and check it out. How's yours going out there in the ether? They seem to be doing pretty good. You know, I'm the one who's having a little trouble here. I, I know. You know, I've had uh, my right arms giving me a little trouble, so my camera action is kind <laughs> of... Oh, baby, I'm sorry. You need it's a massage just... after? One of those things. A little things. lotion on and do a massage? Yeah. We'll okay. Be chill after. Please excuse me while I interrupt my class with like wifery stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I have to whiff. Uh, you guys ever whiff? Sometimes I have whiffery stuff to do. Luminous opera. That's how we have to say it. Okay, here's the deal. You're still here. You probably like me. Yeah, a couple of you may have wandered in because YouTube recommended it. But if you're here and you're here all the time, you like me. So I'm going to do this now. From now on, whenever we use Luminous Opera, all of us together go, Luminous Opera. No? Is it just me? I feel I really I don't know. Clever. I'm sure you got lots of Sherpets out there doing it with you. We just don't have a mic tonight. Let John know you did it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take my nice, wonderful neon color and use it to create those highlights on top of The rest of those little branches. How's that? There we go. Oh, let me dry this because you know what ruins rea neon reactive paint? You get it muddied up with black. Mm. It worked. It was working earlier. Did you unplug it? I unplugged it. I'll plug <laughs> it back in. <laughs> Ouch. Don't. It's okay. My knees don't bend that way anymore. It's okay. Okay, so there she is. <laughs> so guys, uh, don't forget, use Lowe's Heat when you're painting that. I would not be doing my job if I didn't tell you about those shifty paint colors. 
and they like to shift when you use heat so don't do that um, and what that means is that heat can cause uh, paint to darken or lighten depending on the kind of paint but uh, oftentimes it causes that causes the uh, those those darker colors to uh, to shift out into slightly different colors and you really don't like that when you use heat because it's a little a little problem Huh? Not so much in, in your pro paints, but it does happen every once in a while. What does? Color shift. Color shift, yeah. yeah. And Oh, it can with these uh, really temperamental pigments. Oh, yeah, especially like your fluorescent paints. Yeah, like it just totally did. So it did do some color shift. Um, and again, you don't see it very often unless you're doing a temperamental pigment or a very inexpensive pigment. And if you're doing a very inexpensive pigment, all you do is just adjust for the fact that it's going to darken. So you just paint lighter than you think you need to. It's not like you just like throw down all your paint and run into the street screaming. I mean, you might. That's okay. I'll be there for you if you are. But <laughs> we'll support you through this difficult time. But for the most part, what you do is you just find your way through. Just find your way through. Now, why are these little highlights here, you might ask? Because we're saying that's where some light hit these very shaded logs and mm. roots. Mangroves? Maybe these are mangroves. Could be. Could be girl groves. <laughs> I don't want to be sexist about it. <laughs> they could be they groves. Uh, or them groves. We don't know. You know what? Mm. That tree could be self-identifying as an oak. We don't know. I'm not here to tell the tree what to do with its no, life, man. It's just, we're just I'm here not to here fish. to have that argument. I worked my stuff out. My business all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to work out nobody else's biz, man. I don't even get that mentality. I'm here to work out your biz. Nope. Nope, I'm not. I'm here to help you paint. Super here to help you do that. Super here to help you with paint and stuff. I might even try to help you with what's wrong on Facebook. <laughs> Just because I probably know where that file is. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to take it one step further. Yes, I am. I'm going to get a little of my pad yellow, which is not a diminutive paint. Let's be honest. And a bunch of white. I'm going to take it one step and hit a little extra highlight just because I feel like that's going to make it be even glowier. Extra poppy. Extra poppy. Pop, 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 like Ruby Rod. For those of you that were asking for a Witcher tutorial, which is really almost neck and neck about the Baby Yoda thing, we might actually have it in. Working on it. I don't know why I just randomly said that. I feel like, so it's weird. I'm having conversations with my community all day, like through all the social media. Yeah. And then like, this is sometimes my chance to answer back. <laughs> so that's what I do. I answer back from here. Okay. Now I'm going to give him a little bit of a plot of land, as you can see him there. So let's, um, let's, um, let's go. Here's a place to sit and fish. I think you'd like to stand here. <laughs> Sing a song, it'll help. Yeah. Sing a song. <sighs> I don't want to paint it in with this tiny little brush. <laughs> you don't have to worry about this brush. This is a number six round black velvet. I just don't want to, uh, no, it's not black velvet. It is a black pearl like the shit. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my purple and my blue and my black, and I'm going to make a very dark color, and I'm going to paint this all in. And the whole reason I switched brushes, I just didn't want to paint it in with a small brush. That makes sense. That's all it is. Um, I just, you, you're totally welcome to just relax and paint with one small brush. But uh, I got stuff to do. I have Netflix shows to watch. Sadly, I have finished AJ and the Queen. And I don't, I don't know. I'm, I, I get into show holes. <laughs> but I think I have a good place, so pretty excited about that. 
oh, just finished the new uh the new one they did Kipo and the Wondrous Monsters. It it, it is a cartoon. Why did you sigh? That was a really good show. Why did you sigh? I heard oh, you no. sigh. No, I was uh <sighs> just trying to stretch is all okay. probably her. I was muted, so it was not commentary. <laughs> no commentary is being made over here. No commentary about Kipo. So, well, yes, don't make commentary about her shows or she'll, you know, get you. See, I got it. So, yes, as you guys know, it's uh, one of those. Well, I, I've got a little bit of a, the reason why I'm not quite so charismatic and talking to you tonight is because I have a pain in my neck. Quite literally, I'm, uh, I've got a pain in my neck. I don't know what she's doing there. She's why is she doing that? But I've, yeah, I've got a pain in my neck from doing some like crazy work stuff over here, and so she's like, I don't know what she's doing. She's hybrid painting and drying. I don't exactly know what this technique is called. Paint and dry, and then let me narrate. That's what this is. Is the husband narrates while the wife. Paints in that area multiple times so it's nice and black and nice and covered in with that color. Which I don't actually think is black. I think it's some blue and purple and black maybe. What color did you use there? I used, I have blue and purple and black here. I actually hey. grabbed some green but I didn't really care. What I wanted is a very dark black value. I was kind of close. Yeah. And I had to take several coats because it was just kind of streaky and I didn't like it. And the focal part of your painting always is going to be where the greatest area of contrast is. So what I'm trying to do is just make sure this ends up being that greatest area of contrast. I'm just attempting that. Then I'm going to grab a chalk pencil and I'm going to draw. Draw, 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 draw. So we're going to say, I don't like that right there. It's going to make a big weird thing on his head. Often you guys say, well, how do I fix a mistake? This would be similar to that. white I'm gonna remove this because I don't want a weird dark thing sticking in his head I'll grab some of my pink paint and I'll work it over the white and I'm gonna dry it and then I'm gonna blend it and you won't even see it anymore so I'm just kind of like tapping my brush up and down and you can see as I go out it kind of blends I'm just trying to create a little zone I'm gonna dry it and I'm going to blend it, and it'll go away, and then I can paint his head there, and it won't have a big weird in his head. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, she's just going to go through, and, and that's, yeah, making sure that, the, and she's going to do this again, isn't she? Where she's going to do that blend and paint and blend and paint. And that's just so that you guys can, she, you can see that she's got, got to make sure that's thoroughly dry so that each subsequent layer can be done properly. And I get over here and see, hey, look, there's a handful uh questions coming here. Yeah? Yeah. Like, how do you fix that? <laughs> what size canvas is this? 11 by 14? Yep. Always in the description. Um, I use all 50,000 characters of my YouTube allotted description every time. Click a video, open up the more, and there's going to be a bunch. I'll tell you if you can sell a thing or not, or how, if you want to teach it, how you could do that. I'll tell you about our licensing company. And I even let you know how, like, churches and, 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 uh, Community centers can you use a um, whole bunch of stuff about materials. Then I tell you about a whole bunch of materials that you might like to see that you could use. I tell you books you should read and then other videos you might want to watch. Like I get busy up in there. <laughs> I know it was a weird description. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this chalk pencil. I, I think these are down there. These are general chalk pencils and they're just chalk in a pencil form. It's very helpful. You can see general pastel chalk. I'm going to use this one. In, and I'm going to just sort of sketch in the little boy here. And I just wanted room right there to be able to do it. So first we're going to say the top of his head, maybe about there. And his gesture is really kind of like straight down. Right? But then there's this nice sort of space there where his little figure likes to come back and then right here at the wrist we've got this and that so 
when you're drawing in figures, if you're ever going to freehand them in, sometimes it's nice to put in the gesture of the figure. And whenever you hear an artist talking about that, what we're really saying is not all the details, but what sort of lines and curves, basic, like less than a stick figure, am I seeing? Like I'm seeing this. And then when you're trying to like really exaggerate the fun and play of a figure, this lets you go, oh, I could bend this hard here or I could bend that there where you might possibly do those things. Give myself a bit of a head shape because those are always nice. You don't want different to be... painting if you don't want to paint the head. If you put the other end on top, they look funny. You really do. They do. So I'm gonna just taking care of that, getting that figure drawn in. Oftentimes I sketch and paint, but uh, the feedback on that is that it's stressful for everybody. <laughs> heads are on figures, adults are seven to eight, and kids are around four or five heads of a head. So when you're trying to, let's like say this is a younger person, then you'd be like, oh, it's the head is like this. Elbows always, always bend at the waist. like to draw the little paddle that's a hand. Hands like look little paddles to me. Favored waist. Down to that jacket line. This jacket line kind of comes out a bit. Hairline comes forward a bit. Shaggy that way. Bit of shag this way. And then there'll be a curved chin in. Weirdly, this, this hand is going to be much smaller. We're exaggerating the foreshortening of that. I'm going to exaggerate the bend of this leg even more. Heel. And what's wonderful is that he is totally... A silhouette so once I get the contour that is the outer line and shape of him I like to when especially when doing little boys I like to rumple the pants rumple the pants well, the coat. oh Craig's just out there giving us giving me a little support chat so thank you so much he, I really, really appreciate you guys coming out here and all of the patron guys. You really make it possible for us to do this. Thank you so much for your generosity. I'm going to bubble it up if we got yeah. patroned. And it was Craig. Craig. It was it was your Craig patron. Craigy poo. So you must to come to an event, Craig. Like bubbles. Bubbles for you. A bubble for you that you can't see. Some more bubbles. More bubbles. There's a bubble you can see. There's a bubble. You can see these bubbles now. <gasps> ah, these bubbles are for you. They're but two bubbles, but they are yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm really pleased with this lesson, guys. I like it too. That was crazy. Yeah. That was wild. It happens. <laughs> the cameras have not been your friend today. They've not, they've not been happy with me today. I don't know what's going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this time into if if my line is here, I am going to imply maybe some ripples just a bit around it. So I sketch that in. So I've got all that sketch in. And then there's a well, you can't catch fish if you don't have a bucket. You can, but they're very hard to carry home. And then it's nice to have a place to. sit <laughs> as opposed to bury your treasure well no, this could be very much huck finn well, you feel like it has a huck finn vibe well you just had to mark a little x there i was just like <laughs> <laughs> could be buried treasure could be 
number four round. A little too much water in the brush. And the only reason that's a problem is it just isn't giving me a thick application of paint. So I'll have to come back and apply more. That's the only reason I even care. Only reason I even care about it at all. Some strappy bangs. Might take a couple of coats of paint to get there, guys. Not a That's big deal. All right. Because we don't even have to dry it if we don't want to. We can work on our bugs now that we know where everything is, our glow flies. Mm. I bet Craig is loving this painting. Oh, yeah. Everybody's loving this painting. This turned out really nice. We've got a really great crowd of people. Great crowd of people. And I, I apologize for not being more chatty tonight. Like I said, I've just got a. Uh, just a little pinched muscle here and it's in my uh Amy, I'm so sorry. We are gonna do some massage on Oh, on it's okay. It's just show. it's all that's all that's the reason that's uh why I'm not more chatty. <laughs> well we have to make sure that you're good for tomorrow's show. Oh well, I'll be just fine. A little bit of a second hand thing happening there. As opposed to a third hand. And we'll do some lines of straps, right? So there we go. There's some fishing. That's definitely some fishing. And some weird like little tackle bits, you know, hanging off as you get. What will be helpful is that sharp curve right here. See that right there? That's the big deal. The fine neck and just a bit of back of the head because you can really do a lot with the hair. I like to take the toe of the brush and sort of flick it out. And that almost gives us that tousled hair, doesn't it? Let's, uh, let's kind of go, whoa! We got up. Mom didn't see us. We did not brush our hair before we left the house. Huh. That's what my son would do. If I don't catch him before he leaves, it's not happening. I'm going to come along here. I'm pressing very lightly so I can keep my line very thin. Rinse out more. I don't want any black now. I'm going to take a little bit of my pink, some yellow, lots of white. Now, this pink could have a little black in it to sort of make it different than the background, right? There we go. And then I'll even grab some of this. There we go. So the front of his jacket now is very white. When you need to remove the chalk, you just use um, a little uh, water and a clean, clean water and a brush. I'm going to get right into the white and pink because I feel like that really shows a lot better. There we go. So now the seat's kind of lit and the bucket's kind of lit. I'm 
I'm going to put out my favorite tool for dealing with fine lines, fluid paint, golden titanium white fluid. You could also use craft paint. I won't turn you in. It will hurt nothing. No one. No one will be harmed in the making of your painting if you switch to craft paint. I'm going to come here and grab a number one monogram liner. Very delicately come over the top of the pole with a highlight. Just a little rippling in the water. Now, for it to really feel like rippling, I'm going to come in and get into my uh, dark colors, right? Make sure that I shade it. Kind of a pain to do sometimes, but you just got to... I'm going to add a little bit to the base of the wire. Let's darken the wire coming up. So as it hits the water, it darkens. Wow. And Stephanie B. J Barlow just joined us in here. Hi, she's, Stephanie Barlow. She's having... A, a, she's just running a little bit behind here today. I think she's having a little sneezy, sniffy... Oh, day. my littlest too. But she's, of course, out here helping us out as one of our patrons, supporting Aww. what we do. So thank you so much, Stephanie. I have to bubble you as well, Stephanie. Let's bubble it up before we butterfly. Bubbles before butterflies. Is that is that like... I'm not going to say the other thing. I think that's just rude. So I'm going to say bubbles before butterflies. Like, and those bros can do whatever they like. It's like, come at me, bubble. Come at me, bubble. Come at me, bubbles. Come on. Yes. Those bubbles are just next trying. time the bubble machine's on, it's gonna be like a bubble blizzard, and y'all are gonna be laughing. It's like because you were here today, and you're like, ha, 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 I got away from her, and right. I won't blame you. It it goes between, uh, you know, anemic to apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anemic to apocalyptic is correct. So I'm gonna do my little butterfly shapes, and right. I find it's like really wonderful to you know sometimes you wanna. Talk about the wings and things in different perspectives. I think it's important to not just make like little V's, even though some of them will be just little V's, some of them will be a little more defined or thought, thought out. As you go forth, what you doing, Twix? I know you're here. Yeah, she's under my. Sweetie, you want to say hi? You want to say hi, everybody? She, she says hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's wanting attention. <laughs> she's a she's a hairy dog, not mm -hmm. a furry dog. She's fluffy today. She's not clipped. Soon she will be clipped. But she's not clipped today. It's fun to like put these uh, sort of a couple places around. Yeah. You want to make them far away. You just make them small little dots, but then you want to make them bigger. You make them bigger dots. Wow. This has turned out really nice. Wow. Sorry. Just, <laughs> it's just that it's still doing it in the queen. I'm going to be doing that from now on. Like if anybody shocks me, I'm going to be like, wow. Sorry. Please don't down thumb me because I'm annoying. There was a show. <laughs> That was on in the 90s that had like, this Fran girl. Fran Drescher. Yeah. yeah that was 
such a good show. I watched all that show. What was that show? The Nanny. That was it. He really, he, he, he does not know The Nanny. He knows The Office. Sure. But not, he did not watch The Nanny. I full on watched The well, Nanny. Well, I had seen it. It was like come in and we'd go. There was like a whole bunch Fran of shows. Dresser got me into Kegels and isolated muscle exercises. <laughs> Just saying, I owe her. You oh. owe her. We all owe her. <laughs> I said that. It's late. If you don't know me well, you'll know that late shows get weird. <laughs> That's okay. That, this butterfly has got a death wish because it's so close to the water. And there's clearly fish. Yep. What is it thinking? It's going to get got. I like all these so much. Oh, I dig it. Don't you guys dig it? Oh, my gosh. It turned out so good. I'm trying to determine how many. Yeah, I'm just, I may be there, and, and then I'm trying to decide if I want to add a glow effect around them because I think they look spectacular right now. They really do. And I don't think it will add anything. To be super candid. Well, that's, you know, that's why you got to know when to audit. Know when to hold them. Know when to walk away and know when to run. You don't. <laughs> Soundtrack in my head. I'm going to sign my painting now. All right. Because I feel super good about it. I think it looks great. I hope. You, you know what I hope? I hope their painting looks great. It's wonderful that I had a great night painting. And I did, and I love spending my time with the baby and everybody here and everyone who came by to support this crazy painting that, you know, is maybe a little different. Um, but what's really exciting to me is when you paint it. That is the big moment for me in my heart. When you guys find your way into a painting and you do it and you have an art breakthrough, something I said maybe unlocks a technique or an idea or maybe just a little bit of encouragement keeps you going through that middle painting phase. Whatever it is, I'm excited about that. Though I am pretty thrilled with this painting. Like oh, it, it was exactly amazing. like what I hoped in my head, and its glowiness is just on point. On point. All right, I'm gonna turn around. I think I forgot to keep taking step by steps. <laughs> I'll catch some from the from the, the replay. There'll be a couple weird ones, and then some <laughs> straight up. We'll get through it. We'll, we'll have it. one. Yeah. You, well, I'll get one up for you guys by tomorrow. Oh, this turned nice. out great. I'm really proud of that. I'm super happy with it. Super happy with that all the way. Guys, I wouldn't even have this here. I'm going to go like this. You guys can see it. because I'm not the big deal. The painting is the big deal. Thank you for spending time with me. It really means a lot. You guys have a lot you could do with your time. A lot of places you can learn to paint. And I'm really appreciative that you choose us to paint with live. I cannot wait to see your paintings on the website, in group, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever you choose to share it, even Pinterest. <sighs> a lot going on in the world right now. So be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.